I'd just very much like people to understand uh, one of the most resonant uh, uh, messages that comes across, and it just gets a knee-jerk response every time, is, uh, is, is they talk about cleaning the park and the smell of urine, and they talk about urinating and defecating outside, and, and people are outraged, understandably outraged. It's like, oh, that's disgusting, and, they, and, and people get angry about that. But uh, I believe they'd be equally angry in a different way if they understood that after 10.30 at night when Bronsted closes down their 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 public restrooms there, um, from Bete de Gusto Park downtown, the closest established lavatory is one mile away. Um, when they run people off from that park, and they always keep coming back to that sidewalk, it seems, but when they run people off from that park, um, they don't stop urinating and defecating out side at night and it's a crime sure uh, and and it's and it's a health concern but there's not everyone. many options is what you're saying but it's a law that can't be complied with it's on its face it's a law that that the city shouldn't enforce shouldn't legally be able to enforce um, if there's no way to comply i'm a 50 year old male who would put myself at risk if I walked to the uh, mile every time I needed to urinate. Right. Um, and uh, now there are many businesses. If you spend some money, you can you can uh, uh, use their restaurant. Uh, but uh, there are, uh, and then some will allow you at their at their courtesy, their discretion to use your restroom or not. But many people get turned away often. And that's a full mile away to the nearest established lavatory. Um, I think the public, if they understood that, I, I've asked a number of different uh, members of the media to communicate that, and they have not. Well, what do you think? Uh, maybe the public might crowdfund a, a, a restroom closer to downtown, like a public restroom? It doesn't cost much uh, uh, to drop a porta john um, The city and the county already has... Uh, Lavatories in public parks. In, in public parks, but they also downtown. There's uh, there's lavatories that have outdoor entrances. Ronstadt Center has them, and the uh, the, the uh, that beautiful domed uh, state building across from the library has an outdoor lavatory, outdoor entrance lavatory that they lock after business hours. Even after business. in in non homeless issues, people seem to deface and break. And, and destroy property, even if it's public property, especially if it's public property. You know, the bus, you see it. But I, I, I think... From a health perspective. Oh, from a health everyone, perspective. Everyone that uses um, our common spaces, right. um, that walks about and sits on rocks and lays in the grass and, and walks about in our common spaces, has a health interest in in some simple hygienic facilities. Right. From a legal perspective, you can't make a law that's impossible to comply with. Well, you shouldn't make laws restricting people from urinating. And if go government and if laws seem to contradict itself even when you, you compare it to our Constitution or Bill if, of Rights. If those cited for that offense were um, as articulate and versed with the Constitution as uh, this armed and dangerous First Amendment weapon, uh, it would be a different situation. Our courts would have to respond differently, and that law would be changed, or actually bathrooms would open. Well, or their main excuse is dropped. that they don't have any money. This is their excuse. But as a parallel, in an Eighth Amendment case, if a person's in prison, the government can never use as an excuse, well, the reason we violate the Eighth Amendment is because we don't have enough money. The failure to have enough funds is part of the constitutional violation, not an excuse for it. And so I think it would be the same with homeless people. I think homeless people are similar to prisoners because they really don't have no financial ability to do anything, and they have very little to no political power. Well, prisoners so got, got, to got, got to get, get to go to the bathroom. They do. Uh, yeah. yeah, they yeah. do. They, get the, they at least get the basic human needs, food, bathroom, people. Some medical. 
the, the one the one thing I wanted to bring up is you know it, I think the dialogue is uh, where like if I was an opponent of what you're saying maybe the questions that would be on people's mind is well if there's no bathrooms in this area why would you sleep in that area why wouldn't you go sleep a mile away at public the reason people gather in the heart of the downtown business district one the city made a law that that's the only place they can legally encamp. It's a city's law. But two, it's safe. There are people right. moving about. There are lights. So you There's choose. So you choose to stay in this location because you group up and, and it's a safety concern. They seem to. They seem to be very tolerant of uh, individuals who alone stay in very out of the way places like um, the washes. Uh, well, until uh, you know, until the monsoons come for obvious safety reasons. Uh, but. Uh, uh, if you, uh, if, you, if you gather if you gather together for safety um, you will attract the attention of uh, members of the community you'll attract attention of the police you will attract attention that makes it more difficult for you to, to encamp and so uh, you know it's almost as if the pressure is to, to be alone isolated out, out and, and at that point you're vulnerable uh, uh, this year two men died on on uh, Miracle Mile, one late January, one late February, uh, they were beat to death alone where they camped. Uh, one of them was uh, a man named uh, Daryl Flincham, Kenny. Daryl Flincham? He died uh, 800 West Miracle Mile, uh, between the uh, cemetery and, uh, and a call center building. There. When uh, people just came out and beat him for no reason? Somebody, uh, somebody that uh, apparently had some, some imbalance. Uh, so it was like a personal or no, much no, uh, like that. beat him to death where he slept. That wouldn't have happened if he'd have camped with three, four people, and he'd like right. that safety and numbers. He'd have liked that, but he wouldn't have liked to camp with thirty. But he'd have liked to camp with two or three. Right. Um, but he camped alone because he never had troubles that way from the police. Yeah. And, uh, to have it be that our government is driving vulnerable people into more vulnerable uh, uh, conditions is. Uh, it's it sounds it sounds morally fundamentally morally wrong and 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 just basic freedom. You should be on this side of the camera. You're right. Uh, yeah, yeah. And um, particularly for, for excuse me for women um, who uh, you know women out alone is very vulnerable. Women yeah. already outnumbered. Six women to women tend on the to be street. more of a victim than men. Definitely. And they're outnumbered six to one on the streets. Um, and, you know, uh, it, it offends me when people like Pastor Dave suggest that, 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 that like the vast majority of homeless people out there are criminals and stuff like that. Like, the truth is most homeless people that have arrest records, their records are filled with lifestyle crimes. Like sleeping in areas they're not allowed to sleep, using the bathroom in areas they're not allowed to In other bathroom. words, non-violent crimes. Not even non-violent. Literally lifestyle crimes. Non-victim crimes that are designed to control the lifestyle of the populace. So we call them lifestyle crimes. They only apply to homeless people. Homeless people that are focused to harass homeless people out. Right.